So today's question was inspired by a comment on one of my most recent videos, The Fates of Axton and Salvador. If you have not watched that video, you can, uh, you can go do that right here. But as for this one, Nova Enforcer 15 asked, What about Gage? Her dream was to become a vault hunter, and now she is a wedding planner. That's a fair point. Vault hunter to corporate merc, like with the case of Zero, that makes sense. But a vault hunter to a wedding planner, that's a little out there. That's a little weird. So how did Gage get from one to the other? What has she been doing in the time between Borderlands 2 and Borderlands 3? And I actually thought that this was an interesting enough idea to make a video on. So Nova Enforcer 15, my friend, this one's for you. Today, we will discuss the fate of Gage the Micromancer. Now, before we get into it, let's get some context. For those who don't know, Gage is one of the playable Vault Hunters in Borderlands 2, added as the first DLC character to the game. One of my best friends actually played the hell out of Gage once she came out, and I can't really blame him. Gage is fun, 10 out of 10 would recommend. As for her backstory, the history surrounding Gage really deserves its own video, but the gist of her past is that Gage was, or is, a genius, a prodigy born on the planet of Eden 5 with a knack for for inventing and loving parents to support it. However, all that changed when her iconic robotic companion, who she had recently built at the time, killed Gage's high school rival when she, the rival, simply shoved her. To give some context to the context, Death Trap, Gage's robot, was built to counteract bullying. Gage being pushed triggered Death Trap's anti-bullying countermeasures, and one miscalculation in his code completely disintegrated Gage's rival. I I kid you not, the girl who shoved her literally exploded. And it was from there that Gage was to be tried and arrested for, you guessed it, the unlawful creation of unauthorized technology. Not murder, of course. No. However, she escaped to Pandora with the help of her father, and she chose Pandora because, as a child, Gage was fascinated by the history of the Iridians and Pandora as a whole. And from there, well, I'm sure you can figure out the rest. But that was then. What about now? Where is she? What is she doing? Well, we got our answer in the second DLC for Borderlands 3, Guns, Love, and Tentacles. In it, we are reintroduced to Gage, a much older Gage now, mind you, where she has retired from vault hunting and has become an official certified wedding planner. But why? <laughs> why is this the case? Why did she choose to go down the path of a simple wedding planner instead of staying with the Crimson Raiders or going on as a mercenary or living up the fame of killing Handsome Jack like a certain pair of vault hunters? And, well, I've thought about this, and you can almost consider Gage's stint as a vault hunter as almost like a growing pain, a phase of her life where she thought she had found her calling, but no. We've all had this kind of experience. When we were younger, we all went through these phases where we wanted to be an astronaut, or the president, or a world leader, or whatever, and we did this because we thought it was cool. Uh, for example, I went through a phase where I wanted to be a magician. I carried around a deck of cards with me everywhere I went and practiced card magic because I thought it was cool. In this case, in the case of Gage, she is really no different. The idea of seeing alien stuff that she's heard about from her childhood, hunting and killing said alien stuff for sweet loot, and learning the history of the six galaxies was all very enticing for her. But like with our dreams of going into space or becoming president or a magician in my case, it was rose-tinted and nothing more than a phase of your life. Gage even hints at this, talking and reminding herself that she is no longer that little girl obsessed with anarchy. She has duties now. 
she has a job. No longer can she or does she want to mess around. Gage has simply grown up. But like I said earlier and in previous videos, Doing what Gage and the other Vault Hunters did, beating Handsome Jack, one of the most infamous personalities in the corporate world, that type of accomplishment would make you famous. The feat would put you in the spotlight for better or worse. In Gage's case, it was for worse, considering that she's technically still a wanted fugitive on Eden 5. <laughs> Of course, she says she's wanted for murder, but as we are aware, it's not so much murder as it's murder with unsolicited technology. And so those of her past, those who are the reason she came to Pandora in the first place, have come back to haunt her, and it has really put a damper on things. So her life post-Jack is one constantly on the move, which is probably why she became a wedding planner. The moment she settles down, she's recognized for who she is and what she's tied to, and those who want her arrested, and probably killed, catch wind and force her to move on. But as a wedding planner, one is constantly going from place to place anyways, so the job really only benefits her lifestyle. But given that, however, I'm not really sure how reliable she could be if called upon by the Crimson Raiders to help with, insert future plotline here. Although. I smell a possibility that freeing Gage from her past could very well be a plot in the future, but who is to say for certain? If you have any questions or comments about this video, Borderlands, or its lore, you can leave them in the comment section down below, and I'll be sure to read each and every one of them. Thanks for watching.